this is probably the money slide for the elbow. There's three things that are pretty characteristics of tendinopathies. And you can kind of, if you know the anatomy, extend this to any other tendon that you can think of and figure out the exam. Because we're talking about tennis elbow and golfer's elbow. These are the big three. It's tenderness where the tendon's damaged, or the muscle, but tendon. And that's going to be, in this case, the epicondyles. So it's going to be right on that button, right? For the medial, right in there. And then, because it's a wrist extensor, pain with resisted contraction. So like, he's going to bring his wrist back, and I'm going to resist it. And so you can try it on yourself. Like, it can't be with the elbow bent. Why is that bad? If I do it like this, is this good? Bend your wrist up. Is that a good test? It's not ideal, it's not bad, but like it's better if you do it extended because now the muscle tendon unit is, is at length. You're probably gonna elicit more pain that way. And then passive stretchings, the other way you do that, okay? And then you kind of bend it down like we were talking about getting that stretch. Sometimes you gotta intern, like rotate the wrist a little bit, but you wanna get that nice stretch. And at least two to the three should be problematic with someone with significant tennis elbow or, uh, on that thing. Because like, that's how you sometimes tell, like if, you, if they're complaining so much, you kind of palpate, but maybe they're more vague and they don't have any pain with resisted. Either they're a really mild case, or you gotta start thinking of radial head, do they have some arthritis in there? Maybe that's not consistent with the diagnosis. All right, so ulnar collateral ligament stuff. If Josh was gonna throw, you can say sitting like that, Josh uh, kind of rotated back. Like if he was throwing or doing a pitch like sidearm at 20 to 120 degrees, which is the most vulnerable area, he'd be looking like this. So you can do a valgus stress test just like uh, you do for, um, just like you do for the knee. You hold it distally push at the joint, and then bend. If you're gonna do it in this fashion, you don't want the elbow to bend. If you're doing, if the elbow is flexing, you're probably not applying the pressure on the right thing. You gotta go right across the joint, fix it, and then push down. And then you can check side to side. You're just looking for a little give on somebody. If someone's really mobile, they might actually feel a little bit loose, but just make sure it's ligament and not the elbow flexing. I think the easier thing that you can do is this thing called the milking maneuver. <clears throat> and it almost reproduces what you do when you're throwing. You just hold the elbow like this and just imagine like his thumbs like an udder and then I'm just pulling down on it. So I'm pulling across a joint. It's a little easier to put pressure on it. But you don't have to explain it, the milking maneuver, but that might sound a little weird. But anyways, this you're just putting pressure right across that. So that's how you do that. Another thing, uh, if they're kind of weak, they're kind of be weak on their intrinsics, right? So you can kind of do the, uh, uh, like have a piece of paper and try to pull it from them. And don't forget about the interosseous like the uh, abductors and the adductors. You can kind of also put a piece of finger between, a piece of paper in between their fingers and pull that out for their interossei. And then finally, like if they're really bad, you know, their lumbricals will be a problem. Remember like when you, the, the muscles that kind of flex your fingers but keep them extended, those are the ulnar nerve. So those are the tests that you can do there.